Have you ever tried to make resources conditional upon reality? It's tricky, but let's take a look at one way we can do it. Hi, I'm Olaf Gredin, and today I want to quickly cover an interesting use case on conditional resources that might help you in an environment. I had a scenario recently where I wanted to automate the creation of a landing zone for a customer, but I knew that there were some possibilities of duplication, and I wanted to solve for that in a slick way. Likely, you're experienced in what happens when you attempt to create a resource that already exists. You'd need to import the resource in order to work with it in Terraform. But there are some resources out there that are singular in nature, and someone has to create it once. Now, to be fair, your infrastructure as code should be more explicit, and something like a landing zone, that is, a base set of infrastructure resources your platform is dependent on, should anticipate this need and incorporate it into the strategy. But go with me on this, and perhaps you can put this to practical use within your environment. I have here kind of a, a basic set of elements. I've got a couple of variables, and then I've got a resource group that I want to create within Azure. And this, when I referred earlier to some resources that are singular, well, the Network Watcher resource group is one of those. So if you don't know, this resource group is actually something that Microsoft uses internally or Azure uses internally to store the Network, network Watcher resource objects, um, the uh, like if you're doing trace routes or if you're doing um, flow logging, things like that, they'll fall into this network watcher resource group, the resources for those. Um, so we only get one and that it is associated to a location, uh, one per subscription. So in this case, I, I need for my, my end user to actually have, or my customer to have the network watcher resource group but if they already have it, that's completely fine and I don't want to recreate it. Now, I'm sure that you've seen, uh, you've experienced the, the issue when you go to create something that already exists within Terraform. And I'll just plan this for now. Okay, so the results of the plan show us that we're going to add this. So let's go ahead and apply it. Now, everyone has, of course, experienced uh, when you attempt to create a resource that already exists, uh, of course, you're going to get an error message indicating that that resource needs to be imported if you're going to use it again. But I don't want to import this resource because somebody has already created it and perhaps it's already within somebody else's Terraform configuration. I don't need to touch that. I just needed to make sure that there was one there. Usually in this case, what you would do is introduce a count variable. And I might just simply express my count so that this resource doesn't get created when I don't want it to be created. Now, if I apply, or we'll just plan, then of course there are no changes to the infrastructure and the resource group is never uh, added. Uh, if I know, for instance, that this object doesn't exist, then I can change my count to one. And of course I will then get the object. But what I want to do is determine whether or not this resource exists out there uh, before I attempt to, to create it. I need to dynamically determine if this resource exists. So I'm going to get rid of this count for right now. And the best way to check to see if a resource gets, exists is to create a data source. And this data source is going to look for the presence of the resource group in question. And I'm typing this out. Now, obviously you could pass this in as a variable, but the case of Network Watcher RG is that that name is always the same. It doesn't change. So in this case, it's okay for me to explicitly define that. Although I might still pass it in a variable just so that I don't have to type it so many times. Now we can see that, of course, adding a data source doesn't change anything about the nature of the uh, Terraform config itself. But we are uh, we took away the count, so now we are planning to add something again. So let's use now the the output from the data resource to see if that will help us determine if this actually exists. So let's just say, for instance, that I want to use a ternary operator and I want to check the count. So I'm going to look for data dot underscore resource group dot this. And I want to look for one of the uh, one of the attributes that comes back from that data source. So let's just say I look for 
location because I can assume that that will exist. Um, and I need to see if the location is perhaps where I think it is. So I'm going to say equals uh, var location. If that is true, then I'm going to say that the count is uh, zero because that means that we've got the resource group and it is in the right location. If it's not true, then I need to create that. So I'm going to change my count to one. So uh, just in summary, I'm doing a, a ternary conditional and I'm look, I'm saying that uh, if the Azure resource group dot this location, which implies that it exists, uh, is equal to my Varda location, then set count to zero. That way I don't create it. If any of that is false, then set count to one and then I will obviously create this. So if I run the code as is, and we'll just plan again, you'll see that there are no changes because in fact, it is able to find that object, confirm that the location is the same and reflect in a count of zero on my resource. So it's not gonna create this. Now let's look at a case where I want to create that. So let's actually just mis, uh, mistype or rename this, what we're looking for. And I'm gonna be looking for something called resource group-001. And let's plan that. So at this point, based on the logic that I have here, I am looking for now a, I'm assuming that data.azurem resource group.this exists. And that is something called RG-001. And then I'm still doing the same location test on it as well. So at this point, my assumption is, is that because the, the resource group does not exist in my target um, subscription, that it will fail. And so therefore my count should be one because it needs to create it. Let's see what happens. All right, so uh, it doesn't happen the way that I thought that it would. So indeed, my, uh, my RG-001 does not exist. That was anticipated. Um, but the problem with it is that Terraform doesn't handle this error the way that I thought it might. So it is a, uh, a terminating error. That is the, the data resource fails, or the data source fails. Um, and so Terraform exits prematurely. What I intended or what I wanted to happen is for that to result in a condition, which then when I tried to read from data.azurema resource group dot this, it would be false, uh, some sort of Boolean output, maybe an error uh, output. And so therefore uh, my condition location equals equals var dot location would be false as well. And so I would not create it. That is not the case. Now, um, this is something that uh, a lot of people have tried, probably run into the same error and perhaps just gone back to some other way to solve this. I'm gonna show you today a way that you can solve this through true conditional expression. So we're gonna get rid of our data source and we're gonna get rid of this count. We're gonna change things around a little bit. So. Uh, what I want to use actually is a different type of data source. And that data source is referred to as the external data source. Uh, so a, an external data source allows us to read from some other external file. And then uh, based on the output of that file or uh, script in this case, then we can uh, we can do work based on that output. So that's a very general way of saying it, but it's because it's a very general um, utility. Uh, so let's take a look at this real quick. The, the external source actually uh, allows us to specify a program. In this case, I'm using PowerShell core as my program, and I'm giving it an explicit file name that I want to run within the current working directory. Um, and then I, I pass a query to that. So the, the query in this case allows me to just kind of arbitrarily assign key values. So I have a couple of keys that I've assigned and then I've passed some values to those. So those are gonna be passed to my script on the other end. And then my script, now data external is kind of unique. So my script, I have uh, done myself the service of writing down some of the notes from the 
the documentation to remind me how this actually works. Very important aspects of the way that this works. One, uh, it it must produce it must take in at the console or standard in it must take in uh, a JSON payload. Um, so I am using PowerShell here to actually read from the console and pull everything in as JSON. And I want to, or it is JSON, so I need to actually convert it into an object, a PowerShell object. So I convert from JSON the payload, and then I have an object format that I can iterate through. Um, so that's the first thing is that I have to read from standard in. The next thing is, is that I have to have clean output. I, I can only output what I want Terraform to actually consume. Um, and this is standard uh, standard out. So in this case, what I want to output is, or what I have to output is a JSON payload again, but what I want to output is uh, the results of the query. So what I've done here is I'm using a, a try statement and I'm doing some more PowerShell for the PowerShell AZ uh, command loop group, but it could obviously be anything. Um, so I'm testing some of the things that are being sent in. I'm testing the resource group name uh, against a get az resource group commandlet. And of course I hide the output because I, I need all output to be crushed or hidden. Um, and I need to control exactly what comes out. And then based on the success of that try, I am going to create a, uh, a JSON payload that now assigns a new key value of, and this is again, arbitrary, uh, QTY or quantity and this one equals one. So I'm saying that you've asked for a resource group, um, it exists, so quantity is one. Now, if it fails, then all I wanna do is output that the quantity is zero. The resource group does not exist, so it's it's zero. And then finally, I have, of course, my uh, write output. So I need to get standard out whatever I'm putting into this out JSON variable. Uh, and then I just kind of clear clear out the result, clear out the error variable, which is a default variable in, in PowerShell, uh, and then exit with a zero status. So, so you can see here within the documentation, it must produce a valid JSON object on standard out. It must, if it's complete, it must also exit with a status of zero. So I am sort of forcing that. Now, if you want to print some sort of uh, one line error message, then you can send that out to standard error and you can exit with a non-zero status. So this, this documentation is well worth the read. This is actually just a small note within the, um, within the documentation that's available at Terraform's website. But this one note I felt encapsulated like everything that you needed to know in order to, to work against this data source. And as long as you hold all these things close by and retain that, then you can build a script that basically follows the contract that they've set aside. So that's the that's the script, and um, this data source is going to call the script, uh, pass it the variables that you define, pull back the value, the variable that you define in the script, and then make that available as an attribute of the data source. So now if we look at what we've done with count, you can see that again, I'm, I'm referencing a data source, but this data source is special because it calls the script. And I have a special attribute called result, which now is loaded up with any variables that I passed out of the script. So I created one called quantity, it's in the JSON packet, and I have defined exactly um, what those results actually do. So in my case, I kind of flipped this a little bit, and that's one of the values of the ternary is that it, it gives me an opportunity to really um, define what my expected result is and what it will do with that result. So in this case, when I test a resource group, I may come back with the results that it is in fact there. So I've said, yes, my quantity is one because there is in fact one or more of those resource groups available. Um, so in this case, if it's one, I actually want to set it to zero because I, I can't create it if it already exists. Otherwise, set it to one, and then of course I will be creating it. Now, keen eyes will notice that I've quoted my um, my uh, results that I'm I'm querying here or that I'm checking against. One of the I didn't mention this before, but one of the things that uh, 
Terraform expects is that all of your values are strings. So when it when you create the JSON packet in whatever you call downstream, uh, you have to you have to send those back as string values. So even though this this would be a um, a perfectly valid um, integer, uh, I still have to pass it as a string in order to compare it in this case. So now uh, with all of this done, what should happen is that if my network watcher uh, resource group exists, then it will not create it. If it uh, if it doesn't exist, then it will. So I'm going to run a plan. And so we can see successfully here that there are no changes because in fact, the network watcher resource group does exist and I don't want to recreate that. So this just, this does result in exactly what I'm looking for. I am able to test to see if the resource group already exists and then determine if I want to create that based upon the results of that test. Now, obviously that could be um, almost anything. We could test for resource groups, we could test for resources, we could even run some script that actually goes and queries a web service um, to give us something a little bit more complicated. Now, um, in this practical example, um, this was in fact what I was trying to work through. In the end, I didn't use it, and let me tell you why. The, the reason you might not use this is because that it, it affects the portability of your code. So if you think about it, um, Terraform can operate on a lot of different operating systems. And if I am now creating something that relies upon a script to run, then I may have locked down the, um, the requirement to be running on a particular operating system with a particular set of executables uh, or piece of code that um, will then produce the result that I need. So I use PowerShell core here. Now, if we assume that this will run on any operating system, it won't without work, right? <clears throat> uh, I can run PowerShell core on any of these operating systems that Terraform can run on, but I don't know that my client is actually using it. Now I chose PowerShell core in this case because of that fact, it will run on any operating system and the, the likelihood of getting an environment set up on Mac or Linux or Windows to work with PowerShell Core was actually really good. We, we can make that work every time. Uh, whereas uh, if I used something like just bash, then I'm not going to get that to work on Windows. Um, I could have, however, used Python. I could have used some other language that does exist on multiple platforms. So certainly that's not a problem, but you just need to be aware that you are limiting the portability of your code by having a dependency of a, a scripting environment. Now, in my case, as I said, I didn't use this, this flow because of that fact, because in the, in a, um, in more of a public customer or global customer, I, I won't know what they're operating on or what their constraints are. So I decided to keep things a little bit more, um, explicit and straightforward for their benefit. In my case, I continued to use a count and I pointed to a variable, therefore giving them the, the option within their um, variable definitions to specify whether or not the network resource, network watcher resource group existed or not. So they would effectively say, uh, I explicitly, I want to create the network watcher RG or I don't want to create the network RG. Uh, and that would be because they already have it. So I hope that's helpful to you. Um, I know that it was a really great thing for me to learn because I, I think there's a lot of opportunity here, uh, even if I didn't use it for this particular use case, but definitely good to have on your tool belt. See you next time.